For the lot of you don't know um, probably about the Freedom of Information Act, it's basically a law that allows um, to get information from the government from any authority within the United Kingdom. Um, you can literally ask any question you like. So you can literally go up to your MP and say, how much have you spent on your car this year, you very nice person? And they will have to legally tell you. If it's for their own private use, of course, that's excluded. But it's, it's fairly simple as that. Um, it's totally open to anybody to apply for the information um, <coughs> at any time. Um, there is one rule though. They can demand that you send in your request in what into inviting, but they cannot uh, deny anything. There's a section called 816, which basically means if they don't understand what you have requested, they have to help you out. On average, you take less than 20 days to get your said uh, um, answers. There's a couple of little horrible little rules that come up. When, you, when they don't want to tell you something, they are allowed to say, go away. You don't have an automatic right, like you can go up to the police and say, have you got any future plans on X, Y, Z? And as that's information related to preventing crimes, they can basically just say, go away. We're not answering that because it's a public interest harm issue. My actual freedom of information request involved 26 questions. I actually asked just under 400 public authorities are uh, made up of police and local and district and county councils in England alone. That took about five or six days of research finding out how to contact them. Um, luckily I had Google to save me because that saved many hours because so I just put the town in and I said FOI and bang there's the answer but if you go to their websites as a rule it's not very easily located you can find out about dustmen and whatever like that easy as anything but anything about under the Freedom of Information Act completely forget it like anything something can be spun um, and generally it happens with them. They have a habit of not giving, telling, giving you the truth, but not the full truth. Like they, you ask them a question, um, how many people use their email servers? And they will give you the answer, all staff, which is as much use as, I don't know, but that doesn't explain the answer at all because I don't know how many staff I have. And you should have asked that question. Well, it's just, it's just so much work that you just don't, you can't do it and it just becomes completely impossible. Um, it won't come as a big surprise that our friends in Redmond are the number one system being used. Presumably Birmingham don't think that way. And there's an, uh, one in Devon. Uh, they're not using Linux, they're using Solas. Um, 10. It's another little strange little fact, they don't even know they're using Floss when they are. And one of the nice little comments, I've got one from one of them on the phone was basically that. Um, that they don't actually know that they're using it, but they are using it. And the fact of the matter is that it's used, more computers run it, then don't run, run the software from Redmond because basically if you use Thunderbird technically you are using open source software so you could actually define that computer as an open source system straight away. The people who you, you generally talk to are not the IT people, they're the legal department and their level of IT knowledge is um, zippity doo -tar. They seem to believe their email client is Exchange now, I'm impressed by that because they must be spending a fortune on, on licensing if they can afford to put exchange on every single machine, but there you go. It, 
basically it's made me more determined to make this happen and to bring floss as such. I hate that term, floss. It's Some of the weird statistics I've got up front. There's a reported uh, 4,280, 956 computers in use in the public sector. Sounds reasonable. Then you get the other statistic. <coughs> There is 2,765 computers that is known to have an OS installed upon them. Which basically means they're all extremely dodgy, or they don't know what they actually own, and they've got no um, stock management control going on. And so they haven't got the right insurance level for their equipment. Which is a pretty serious issue, because they wouldn't know if they lost a laptop. which is a big issue, especially what could be on the laptop. And, t and also, um, the other issue with uh, local authorities, the um, financial ombudsman there have to prove everything, so how they get away with not knowing what they actually have and wasting money, because they might have a machine there they don't actually know. There's um, one little itchling in the UK government Sadly, it's on the opposition side of starting to take open source seriously. Like all uh, politicians, their mathematics I question that they could they claim the shadow chance that is basically saying we could save six hundred million pounds a year. I don't think so because I don't think we're spending six hundred million a year on open source. Um, Quite for software in the first place. If we are, it's just insanity. So you are taking the police force into account for it? Yeah. I don't know if he has, but what my figures. Yes. But if he puts the hospital into that, you'd say. Yeah, that he'd be talking, he's talking everything, isn't he? Yeah. With government controls. But it's quite seriously, we're all going to come up to the next general election soon, and we can start drumming the drums and making our point heard. Um, the basic set of questions. Pretty bad. Um, this has been simplified down from the 26. <coughs> okay. um, basically, I wanted to find out about the desktops and the operating systems on use. Uh, the laptops again, the operating system. Then on to their servers again, with the operating system. Then I needed to find out how many staff had a, an account on the network, which did come up with some funny answers at times, like. They had more desktops than they had number of staff on the network as such. Mm. So basically trying to find out how many email accounts um, the uh, staff have, which is just a point. The basic ones are those you already know about the server and the client's use, and I found out they don't actually know what they're talking about. Um, uh, yeah, an email client um, basically wants to find out about HTT proxy, which is another good one. Okay, I've got some really interesting answers with that one. Um, oh, the, funny, the funniest one is some of them would not, would not supply me the information about their email server. Little hint here, don't send me an email. Because as soon as you send me an email, I'm not going to get it. Okay, just leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, I asked them what browser they were using. Um, <coughs> that's a pretty obvious question. Um, I would have sort of deviated a little bit and um, tried to find out if they were using DSL or lease line and the connection rate. Um, also, like if their VPN <coughs> type of homework is allowed. Uh, also, tried to find out about the office software and what they're using and so forth. And now the real big questions, which is, I've sort of messed this up, but I was in the rush. Um, here we go. The big, the big six questions that like at the end, basically asking, have they actually reviewed the idea of using um, an open source operating system, email server, an email client, um, HTTP proxy, a web browser, and Office? Right, so that's the actual lowdown of what's really going on. Um.